Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Choices Finding Your Joy. I am just absolutely honored today to share with everyone Arnold Strong. He is a humanitarian communications strategist management consultant and a visionary who serves on several veteran focused nonprofits to help humankind around the world and he has been uh, just a man of service for our country a uh, majority of his life but i will share you now with you now arnold arnold welcome thank you for being here Well, good afternoon. How are you, Paula? Yeah, I'm sorry. I got a little bit of a jump technologically. The internet connection, I think, is a little weak, and so I'm trying to uh, make sure it's good. But yeah, that's a very flattering introduction. I very much appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much for uh, uh, for uh, welcoming me to your show. Oh, I just, I'm so grateful and for all that you've done. I would love you to share with everyone a bit of your background and what brought you to where you're at today, the work that you're doing. Well, sure. I, I, uh, I uh, as you probably know, I'm a, I'm a retired Army colonel. I, uh, I spent 30 years of uh, my life in service. I enlisted right out of high school, um, got my commission from uh, uh, New Mexico Military Institute that enabled me to transfer into UCLA. I'm a Southern California guy, so uh, I was able to uh, come back to SoCal. I, uh, I graduated UCLA in 1990. I was a regular army officer for 10 years. I served in Germany and Hawaii and uh, here, very close to uh, your home there at Fort Lewis. And, uh, and then uh, fell in love with the Northwest. I, I uh, left the service in 2000 and uh, moved to uh, uh, Portland, Oregon. And I was working in technology, public relations in 2000 and 2001 when 9-11 uh, happened and you know like a lot of service members and service veterans I was like what am I doing out of uniform and I immediately went in on September 12th the Army Reserve was a little slow the Oregon National Guard was quicker and uh, I immediately became the public affairs officer or lead spokesman for the Oregon Army National Guard and then eventually the joint uh, National Guard both Army and Air and I did that for six years I was in Afghanistan within six months in 2003 I went to Iraq in 0405 and uh, and Afghanistan again in 0607, um, and then transitioned from the guard into the reserve, a better platform for me for uh, becoming a lieutenant colonel and colonel. And then I served out the rest of my time, mostly in a full time status with the Army Reserve, until about two years ago, and uh, coming up on two years ago in May, so about a year and a half. And I immediately transitioned to become the spokesman for an artificial intelligence company. I've always had sort of a, a real interest in and affinity towards technology and, and technological innovations. And, and my background is really as a communicator, you know, my degrees in English, my master's degree is in communication. And uh, really my background has just been that person that they, you know, prop in, <laughs> prop in front of a camera and say, tell the story. And so I've been a storyteller in my life, and so uh, that's that's sort of what I'm best at is communicating value, whether the organization is a military organization, a nonprofit, a technological company, et cetera. So I did that for a period of time, and then I, I realized that I was probably better suited for a uh, a bigger role, and I was recruited to help co-create a uh, a company here, which is Unify Earth Network, and of course our primary platform, which is Unify Earth Systems. I was really just head down, nose to the grind for the first six months of this year, really working. Um, you know, I, I, I relocated back up to Portland. I live in Southern California now. That's where you're reaching me. And uh, working with my CEO and several of the uh, co-founders, you know, like every startup, we just created something that didn't exist. And I've learned an awful lot from uh, the entrepreneurs that I'm working with now. And, and, uh, and here we are. Oh, wow. Share, share <clears throat> with us some of the details about Unify Earth. 
Yeah, so Unify Earth is, is really what it is, is it's a breakaway blockchain uh, platform, or what we call blockchain 3.0 designed by real master programmers you know our, our tech team i really i really would argue is one of the best in the in the nation certainly if not the world um sort of focused on 21st century disruptive technologies at a foundational level we made about a thousand upgrades to the bit core the core of the blockchain is people know of the blockchain through uh uh bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like litecoin and ripple and eos ethereum but what it really is, is, is the analogy I guess, give is if cryptocurrencies are the are email, then the blockchain is the internet. And that it is a much bigger platform. And what it ultimately is, is a truth ledger. You know, it's a highly securitized, API compliant, you know, platform that where once something touches the blockchain, it's immutable. It can't be changed. You don't have counterfeiting. You can't have double spends. <clears throat> you ultimately can't lose track of the truth. So if a coin, if you think of it as a, is, as, as a cryptocurrency, as like a programmable currency, you know, I pull a, a $20 bill out of my wallet. I don't know the history of that $20 bill. I don't know what it's been used for. I don't know if it's been used in crime. I don't use, uh, know if it's been used illicitly. I don't know what the background of that piece of currency that the government says this piece of paper is worth, you know, a set amount of money. I don't know its history. With a crypto and the blockchain, you once it touches anything technologically, it is then programmed into that. So you have a absolute inviolable, inviolate record of what that has been used for. And so we really think of it as an implementation of that truth ledger that we're all trying to get to. We're trying to make, you know, a transaction a lot more transparent. Um, and to really just figure out the best way to transparently share information, real-time visualization, you know, and oversight, and, uh, and making sure that we just got a lot more transparency in our governance, um, in our world of transaction, in our world of innovation, so that we have less, you know, fraud, less fake news, if you will, and, uh, and more accuracy in, in just the way we conduct business, and the way we conduct governments, and the way we conduct sort of interaction amongst humanity. Wow, that is amazing. That, yeah, it's a big, it's a big one. <laughs> yeah, that can really help in times of disaster and, and a crisis, can't it? Yeah, well, you know, we, we, we've, we've accordingly, we've, we've partnered with organizations that are really, you know, we consider ourselves a, a values first, values forward organization. And so we really look at some of the uh, the best ways to do that is really, we've got the technology, we've got the team, we've got the timing, because there's really a, a thirst for a, a more optimized way of managing, you know, natural resources, managing technology, managing business, managing governance. And so we just know that the timing is appropriate. But more than that, we needed really sort of a, a global partnerships that really, you know, organizations that really think that they can make a difference and are focusing on, uh, on how to scale to improve lives or improve commerce, improve, you know, uh, uh, things across the world. And so uh, some of our partners are like Pop Sports. Tom Root for over 20 years has been um, really working with ministers of education around the planet. He, he touches three million kids uh, a week globally with, you know, his basic philosophy is athletics plus children equals peace. You know, the, you give a kid a cricket bat, he'll be less likely to pick up an AK. Um, and so for two decades, he's been building these Connex trailers into like uh, sort of master classrooms for athletics and then taking a coach, shipping them to a third world country or a, or a disaster area or whatever, and just teaching these kids all these fundamentals of athletics and then you know once that coach is trained you know he go the original coach goes back to the united states and you've got a you've got a sort of a, a pt a pe class and a box um that then goes forward we want to scale that from three million kids that he's touching on a daily basis on a weekly basis now to a hundred million you know we think that we can really get you know a hundred million children in the next like five to ten years we think that we can really be optimizing that's just one of our core 11 clients that we're already working with so everyone's focusing on scale pi.echo 
Um, really, they are, they've got a, a patent pending technology where they've got uh, a machinery that ultimately converts consumable plastics back into consumer grade uh, fuel. And so people are then incentivized and tokenized and their behavior is rewarded for going out and picking up plastic and bringing it to these collection points where it then gets converted to fuel. What does that do? It not only focuses then on, you know, optimizing uh, the resources of the earth because we don't have these seas of plastic that are polluting our oceans and our, and our, on our shorelines and our, our, our landfills, et cetera. But also it minimizes the cost of transportation of fuel because now you've got a reusable resource that can be immediately monetized and incentivized, not just for the organizations, but for the people. You know, when you reward that behavior, it's like somebody going to a recycling point and, you know, bringing in a, a, a can for five cents. Imagine that brought to scale where not only do you have the tokenization of that reward, but you also have the you know incentive to actually do that at scale i mean that's another a client of ours another is uh connect um their website connect hub is really um they're about eradicating infectious diseases across the continent of africa and ultimately the world um imagine if you uh were an at risk of getting aids patient or or just person in uh continental africa what if you were incentivized to actually get your uh, an HIV test. And every time you actually did that, not only is that data then recorded so that we can study and optimize it, but you're rewarded by receiving a token every single time you actually do good behavior, like uh, improving um, you know, ultimately the knowledge of health in the region, et cetera. It's, if you look at all of these, they're all examples of people and organizations having greater sovereign control over their data and being incentivized so that they have control of the information that they want to share with uh, companies, with society, with their peers, with whoever. Because um, right now we're not dealing in a, in a sovereign environment at all. We, we, you know, most of your listeners, probably most of us, certainly, I will uh, admit myself, Seldom do we actually read every one of the things that we're agreeing to when we log onto a website. We agree that on Facebook, we're just going to press, okay, I agree. That we're giving them control over a lot. Like never before in, in history has there been more data um, so used for private purposes. Um, that feeds the algorithm. You know, you're fed certain data into your feed specifically based on what you've clicked on, what you've liked, what you shared in different platforms, et cetera. So it just becomes a lot more incentivized to, for people to control their own data. We think that data really is the future. We think that, uh, you know, if you look at a combination of the blockchain, the Internet of Things, um, and artificial intelligence, you really have sort of a, a much more inclusive future and a way to solve problems at scale. Yes. And, oh, my gosh, just the examples you shared Arnold of some of the things that are that are being done. Oh my gosh, that is so amazing and so fantastic. Yeah, and fantastic oh it is. It, the definition, you know, from the word fantastic comes from fantasy. I mean, like I'm a I'm a ground pounding infantry guy. You know, it's like I'm an airborne ranger that used to jump out of airplanes. You know, and and uh, and so it's a it's a much bigger play for me. I think sometimes we're we're uh, you know. Uh, uh, a soldier is sometimes, or a military person is sometimes the perfect fit for uh, adapting to an entrepreneurial environment because you, you realize, hey, I, 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 you, we sort of live our lives with a philosophy of if it, is, if it is to be, it's up to me. And so that's very much an entrepreneurial perspective as well is that, you know, if um, entrepreneurs sort of create things that don't exist, you know, and like I said, we really believe in uh, leading with values first. That's very much sort of incorporated into your, your sensibility as a military member. And our vision is sort of a universal meta platform, if you will, that's utilized for the good of all humanity. And the first thing we did was we aligned ourselves with the 17 SDGs. That's the Sustainable Development Goals that 193 nations 
There is officially 195 nations in the world, 193 that are recognized. That means that all 193 nations that are recognized um, for their governance across the uh, United Nations have agreed that these goals are worthy goals that we can all shoot for for 2030. And, and they, they're, they're like number one, no poverty, number uh, uh, seven, uh, innovation, you know, number uh, six, uh, clean water, you know, number uh, uh, 15, uh, life below water, you know, it's like recognizing that how to take care of the oceans, 13, climate, global climate uh, action, 17, partnerships, really just figuring out a way that we can make a better future for our kids and our grandkids, you know. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I love it. I love it. Can you share with, with everyone uh, perhaps a website or contact information and what we can do to help? What can someone like me yeah, well, up in that's, Washington that's or someone great. on the other side of the country, what can they do? Yeah, so that's a great question. I appreciate that. So, so our website is unify.earth. Uh, it's a secure site, so HTTPS colon slash slash unify.earth. There's no dot com, dot org, dot net. It's unify.earth. Um, and there, your uh, listeners and viewers will be able to um, get a real scope of what we do um, in their, our white paper is loaded there. Our, um, our pardon me. Read um, our white paper is there. Several of our most recent publications. We've got an ebook on smart cities, which we call intelligent communities, um, and really sort of the future of what we see happening in urban environments and uh, and ways to better manage. I mean, come on, we're still using fifty-year-old technology in most cities that doesn't work. That's not really adapted for you know the speed and pace with which we live our lives on a daily basis. Um, and so, and also you can get a good look at our, our partners and who we are, you know, as founders and as directors of the company. Uh, I, I, I think that we've got a pretty organized, you know, uh, group of people that come from all walks of life. You know, I'm one of only a couple military veterans on our team, but these are people that have led in the uh, organic food movement, people that have led in... Uh, in space research, people that have uh, been creative directors for, you know, major organizations. Some of our, our programmers come from a background of being primary programmers for Apple and Microsoft and uh, Oracle and, and others. And so uh, we've got a great technological background, but we've also, we're all sort of amateur humanitarians, if you will. We're all recognized, you know, as people that are, are in it for more than ourselves. You know, because I think that that's really what the sign of a leader is, is that, you know, uh, when you step into a role of leadership, you're not saying that I'm most important. You're saying that my service is most important to others. And so uh, how can I help others is really what I think we're sort of all about. And because we recognize that there's there's major challenges facing us on this planet, this pale blue dot, as uh, Sagan used to say. And there's an awful lot more that we can be doing at scale rather than just putting our heads in the sand to avoid these problems. And I mean, right now I'm in California. I'm in Long, Long Beach, which is far removed from the fires, thank, uh, thank God. But it gets dark here now at 4.30. That's not normal. Why is that? Because there's a veil of dark brown smoke everywhere. You go just north of here in Malibu, we've got, I've got six personal friends of mine that, you know, that lost everything. You know, they're, they're, they're lost their homes, lost their memories, lost their photos. I'm sorry, I'm writing down towns. You're getting a little bit of back noise, background noise. But, um, you know, in Northern California, I mean, the, 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 they've now confirmed 69 dead, and there's like at least 600 missing. missing. You know, it's the largest disaster in the state's history. And, uh, and in the meantime, we just think, hey, climate change isn't real. Hey, you know, we're just going to keep doing the same thing we're going to do. We're not going to have insist on these uh, on these core corporate responsible, you know, statements. You know, we're just going to trust them. I mean, right now, PG&E is is looking at probably some, you know, responsibility there because they had warnings that there were going to be surges and surges actually happened in the context of both those fires. And so, uh, you know, there's there's an awful lot more that we could be doing better. We think with that Internet of Things and listening and understanding how to better to use data to more rapidly affect change and rapidly take action so that we reduce risk, increase, you know, survivability and, you know, get beyond survivability to more just 
really flourishing in this beautiful place that, you know, this God-given organization that we live on called Earth. Yes, and I mean, I, I, as individuals, we all can take what problems we do have seriously and make a step and help with finding solutions. And so would you say that uh, a step of that is to just, you know, study unify.earth, go to that, see what we can do as an individual yeah, well, to help? Yeah, great question. So that's that's step one. I would say you you uh, your your uh, readers, your listeners, your watchers. Um, as soon as you go to the website, you'll get an immediate pop up incentive to uh, to set up your Unify Earth wallet, a wallet that is an HTML five uh, digital wallet where you're automatically be, be tokenized. You'll receive ten of our tokens, the UEX or or that that's the coin in our exchange, which I would encourage them to hold. You know, we'll be open in exchanges here in the spring of uh, this next year. But the reality is that that is also a tool through which we will be communicating to those that have accessed so that you don't, you don't, you know, have to visit the site once. You'll receive updates. You'll have opportunities to do live streams. We're making partnerships with global um, entertainers uh, to actually stream live video that you wouldn't get otherwise. You know, if you're not able to make a concert in uh, April and late January, you will have the exclusive access to be able to watch that concert if you've got the if you've got the video. But more importantly, it'll give you updates on governance, on investment, on publishing, on transportation, on banking, on retail, on shipping, all these different resources and all these different avenues that we again we're a meta platform. And so we're not we're not segmented to very specific verticals. We're realizing that it's an up-leveling technology that can benefit if people have the right ideas and their values aligned and they support the sustainable development goals, we're probably going to want to do uh, business with them. If they are people that just want to, you know, do some coin dump and just raise money for a token that then ends up, you know, making some people some money and not doing any real value, we don't want to really, really have any part of that. You know, that's mm -hmm. someone else's uh, ethics, certainly not ours. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is just huge, Arnold. This is really exciting. I'm really yeah. excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we partnered with uh, Michelle Bon Giovanni of Heal Our World. She's out of uh, New Jersey. Um, you know, she's she is she's got a deep reach inside um, uh, several organizations, you know, including Dow Jones. Um, and her organization is focused on small to medium sized enterprises and realizing that, you know, those SMEs that support at least one of those 17 sustainable development goals can really make a commitment to behave, to choose and act on behalf of our world. And uh, we've got a, uh, an organization better. We're a Bahamian registered entity. That's literally all, where I'll be after Thanksgiving is there out of the Bahamas. Not a bad thing until you realize that it's also at risk of climate change and uh, flooding and, uh, and tropical storms. But it's a beautiful place to uh, be at, um, obviously. But there in the Bahamas, um, we're partnered with Better, which is Bahamian Exceptional Talent Region, um, and, uh, and Josh Schrager, who has got deep reach inside YPO, or Young Presidents Organization, which literally is trying to get those younger leaders, those below 40-year-olds that are leading companies, leading enterprises, that really want to lead with values first, we've got reach inside YPO as a consequence of that. So we're only aligning with organizations that, you know, really make a difference to really focus on a more sustainable future for our planet, for our kids and our kids' kids, because this place is really a blessing. And if we keep beating her up, you know, she's, we're, nature is telling us something. Yeah. And all these fires and all this calamity that we see globally, the flooding happening right now in Kuwait, the flooding happening inside, you know, uh, Venice the, of just last week, you know, there, there's, there's sort of incontrovertible evidence that unless we change some of our behaviors and make some very minor adjustments, we're going to be paying sort of major consequences yeah. unless we just take this stuff seriously. Yes, yes. I agree. Oh, that is such a great message for you to share, Arnold. Yeah. Gosh, we have about three minutes left in the show. What last words do you want to share with everyone today? Well, I think we've sort of addressed it. I think that the key is, um, you know, uh, Unify Earth is a meta platform. It's what we call blockchain 3.0. 
I'd encourage your listeners to go to unify.earth, set up their HTML5 wallets. You'll receive updates from there. You can follow us on, you know, most social media. We've got a active presence on LinkedIn, on uh, Facebook, on Instagram. Unify Earth Network is our, our tag in most of them because that's our, that's our major organization. We've got a motto that we really believe is our value, and that is we're humanizing the blockchain. The blockchain is a foundational upgrading of uh, the technological uh, innovation you know, known as the internet. This is something that basically is a programmable, uh, it's a platform for programmable currency, regardless of how we interpret currency to be. We don't think of it as something that fiat Governments, you know, have guaranteed fiat currencies for so long. We think that there is going to be specific uses for specific value in specific transactions where people can actually have the sovereign control of their own data. They can personally monetize their own information, their own behavior, their own value so that we can really make a difference and so that each and every individual, each and every city, each and every state, each and every country, each and every one of us can have better sovereign control over their own information and use that control to help others on behalf of the entire planet. That's why we call it Unify Earth. This is just absolutely fascinating. Arnold and beautiful. I mean, I, I could cry. I'm so happy. This is so exciting. Well, oh, thanks. I, I'm yeah. so appreciative of the, uh, of the ability to take an interview and, and to really just, you know, form a relationship because, you know, you're in my old uh, stomping grounds there outside of Fort Lewis and Lakewood. And, uh, yes. you know, boy, do I miss that Pacific Northwest air these days, sister, I got to tell you. <laughs> yes, I bet. It is. It is amazing. And I, I love living where I do and, and bumping into different service members and oh Arnold this is this is beautiful information and I am just so thrilled to be able to share you and the work that you're doing this this is so fantastic for humanity and our planet I'm well, so thankful I really appreciate it. very much yes yes and everyone Check it out. Together, we can make a difference. One person can make a difference. Yes, ma'am. And when we come together, you know, that, that wave can become an ocean. I, I'm so excited. Yeah, and happy Thanksgiving and, uh, and happy holidays. And thank happy you so much. Holidays. Thank you, Arnold. Love, Bye. hugs, and blessings. And everyone out there, love, hugs, and blessings. Thank you. Bye. Aloha.